The Golden Age of Gaming When someone refers to a time as the Golden Age, it's the time where it specified art, skill, or activity is at its peak. The problem with this when it comes to gaming is that the answer to that question will vary from person to person. I recently wanted to make this video because I always see someone say, man, gaming ain't the same as it used to be, or games just aren't fun anymore. And I believe there's a little more to it than that, but gaming has changed. I want you to answer this question for me. What is my golden age of gaming? You can even put it in the comments right now so everyone can see. Now, the majority of us are thinking of a time when we were younger, probably getting to gaming for our first time, or maybe the early years. Some of you might be thinking games like Super Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, Minecraft, Diablo 3, Skyrim, Jack and Daxter, Grand Theft Auto, or some other great older title from your childhood. Depending on how old you are, you may not have even played these games before, or maybe you have but didn't play them, or maybe you think that some of these games suck and you have a completely different list entirely. That's the great thing about this topic. Everyone will have a different period and different games from that period that they consider the best or have the fondest memories of. For example, my fondest memories of gaming come from games like Ratchet & Clank, DC Universe Online, Modern Warfare 3, Unreal Tournament 3, Marvelous Capcom 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Star Wars Battlefront 2. The old one, of course. I remember creating my clan on MW3, doing clan battles with them, doing so many custom lobbies with them, making montages with my best friend at the time, and there are some people from my MW3 clan who I still keep in contact with to this day. I remember playing DC Universe from the beginning of the game's lifespan, making new friends, exploring the world, watching videos and podcasts from my favorite YouTuber at the time, Orbit, along with his friends Nimbus Yosh and there was another guy, I can't remember his name at, right now. I remember playing Unreal Tournament 3 for hours and hours and hours, installing new mods and adding new mutators to make the game more and more chaotic, playing with my family and my brother, doing local matches all the time. I remember playing Minecraft on a trackpad at 20 FPS thinking it was the coolest thing ever. I remember playing PlayStation Home. I remember playing Destiny and hearing this. The thing that I feel people tend to forget when reminiscing upon their prior experiences is that gaming really has changed in a variety of ways really. Not just in a back in my day when I bought a game, the game was finished type way either. For example, monetization. So like the old heads would tell you in the very beginning, when you bought a game, that was it. There were no patches, no DLC, no microtransactions, nothing but the game your G-Code mode. Eventually that started to change with the introduction of PSN and Xbox Live. It all started with the microtransactions, which were mostly for small cosmetic items for a buck or two. Then we started getting DLCs added for games, which, like they are now, were just bonus content for games that you had to pay for, such as maps, weapons, or story expansions. It all depended on the game. And don't even get me started on how you went from paying for items that were cosmetics in microtransactions to having items that outright give advantages to players or quote unquote time savers to having loot boxes everywhere, and yeah, y'all remember that phase? To currently having the Battle Pass rotating cosmetic shop meta that we have right now. But that's a conversation for another time. But the facts are that the reason why these changes stuck and every developer has adapted it to their own game in some shape or form is that it works. Another thing that has changed drastically is the type of games we get nowadays in comparison to the past. There are more games available for play now than ever before with so many more studios making them, whether that be AAA or the endless amount of indie games that we get. Tech has also improved a lot over the past decade. Look at a game from 10 years ago to now is amazing to look at how far things come. Games have gotten bigger and better with the advancement to game engines and the increase of power of consoles and PCs, but also they have been changed from a structural standpoint. A lot of games have a live service model where the goal is to have a revenue stream by having periodic updates that may offer new content in the form of free or paid DLC or new microtransactions in the in-game item shop. Think of a game like Fortnite. 
Fortnite, from its inception, constantly had updates which added new areas to the game, new weapons, new items, new vehicles, new modes, etc, etc. There was always something new for you to discover and play in the world of Fortnite. You were always going to come back to something fresh to do. All while releasing a new battle pass every few months alongside constantly updating the rotating item shop and don't forget the most important part. Fortnite is free to play and available on literally every platform. Fortnite is a bit of an extreme example though since it single handedly impacted the gaming industry so much but you get the gist of what I mean. I mean it makes sense though. Why make only one lump sum of cash when you can have the lump sum and more in a constant stream? But some games are more greedy than others though. Overall, the goal nowadays is to keep you playing for longer in hopes that you will spend money and let's be honest here, for a game that you invest a lot of time into, you are more likely to invest money into as well, right? I mean, personally for me, if a DLC comes out for a game I like, it's a no-brainer for me to buy it. Same thing with shop items. If I like the game, I'm probably gonna buy something from the shop in school. Okay, let's get away from the money aspect. How else has game changed? Well, the games themselves. Over the years, we have seen a lot of games release, and the games of today differ greatly from the ones in the past in terms of gameplay, graphics, and even genres. The graphic part is pretty self-explanatory, just look at these games and how they've changed throughout their generations. It's pretty easy to see how graphically games have changed, so how about the gameplay? My easiest way to explain this is, you know how a game gets a remake and the game has changes to make it more modern? I think a good example is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. They turned the original turn-based JRPG into a third-person action RPG style like games you would see today like God of War or Evil West. As time goes on, they're just things that become standard in games. In games with loot, the rarity system from worst to best is white, green, blue, purple, gold. In 2D fighters, you can choose between simple slash normal controls or there's an auto combo button. In RPGs, there are skill trees along with the armor slash weapon system with stat values while enemies have levels and health bars and you probably also have a level. In looter shooters, when you shoot someone, you will see numbers to let you know how much damage you're doing. In MMOs, the starter town always gets destroyed. In every game, there is now a mental mechanic. And the quote unquote modern game is something that changes with time as new things become the norm. Now moving on to genres. Every once in a while, you get a game that is a one-of-a-kind experience that can't be found anywhere else. Sometimes, these can be completely new ideas brought to light or a new spin on a previous idea. These new one-of-a-kind games usually serve as inspiration for other devs to make something similar but with their own unique spin or flair on it. For this example, we will take a look at the shooter genre. At first thought, you may only think of first-person shooters and third-person shooters, but the shooter genre has many sub-genres within it. If we're going way back to the very beginning, we're looking at ancient games like Space Invaders and Galaga. These were called fixed shooters, pretty simple for the time. They consisted of levels that can fit on a single screen, the player's movement is locked to one axis of motion, and their aim is fixed in one direction. This is a subcategory of the shoot 'em up subgenre, and there are also scrolling shooters, twin stick shooters, rail shooters, and isometric shooters. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on every single subgenre and categories within it because that would take way longer than how long I plan for this video to be. But the shooter genre evolves. We get running gun shooters. Think of games like Contra or Metal Slug. There's also rail shooters, games where you're on a fixed path and just shooting everything down. Light gun shooters, games designed for use with a gun-shaped controller, but can also be controlled by motion controllers or even analog sticks. Corridor shooters, which are some of the first FPS games. Think Wolfenstein, 3D, and Doom. This was around the time where every game that came out was also considered a Doom clone. There is also a new term to describe games that try to emulate these order games, which is Boomer Shooter. This refers to games like Ultra Kill or Dusk. There is still so much that we haven't even touched like third person shooters, arena shooters, hero shooters, tactical shooters, looter shooters, 
battle royales and the new extraction base shooters. There's been so much development in every genre and not just the shooter genre by itself. We have auto chess games, the souls-like genre, roguelikes, gacha games, the extraction genre. There are plenty of other new subgenres or genres altogether that I haven't even named here. Every genre has seen its own growth and it's so amazing to look back and see how far it's all came along. So while I've been going off on all the things that have changed in gaming, I still didn't get to the biggest thing that's changed. You. You've changed. I've changed. We've all changed in some form. Maybe you don't enjoy playing the same games you used to. Maybe you don't have the time to sit down and game all day and night with your buddies. Maybe you don't get that same rush from watching the new game trailers. Maybe you have new interests. Any reason or explanation is okay. I believe as long as you had fun at some point, those memories will live on with you forever. Think about it for some people, right now is their golden age. Kids of today will look back and have Fortnite as their golden age game. VR chat is someone's golden age. Among Us will be someone's golden age. All of this is crazy to think about, right? Yeah, I know. So let the next generation have their time to make their own memories.